There's comfort in the familiar. The stability of doing things the way that we always have. In a world that we understand. Playing by the rules that we've been given. Well, I knew those rules. I played that game. I got good grades because that's what we're supposed to do, right? I graduated from Georgia Tech. I got a great job. I climbed the corporate ladder. I even pursued my passion in education, committed myself to making a difference in this world. I applied my technical background and my business acumen into an innovation leadership role at Lego Education where I was part of a team developing modern education platforms like Lego Mindstorms Robotics. And yet my biggest challenge, it wasn't in the visioning and realization of the cutting edge learning platforms of our generation. No, it was the integration of these platforms into an education system that should have welcomed this opportunity, but instead resisted it at every single turn. And we had the research. We know that these hands-on experiential learning platforms help students develop critical thinking skills, which we all agree is important. But yet change was really slow. I learned a hard truth, that our education system was never designed to create thinkers. This education system, designed more than a century ago by industrial leaders like Ford and Rockefeller and others, was created to produce a generation of manufacturing line workers focused on efficiency, show up on time, follow instructions, memorize. Does this sound familiar? Well, it should. Even in this technological world that is growing and increasing and dynamically advancing so quickly, our systems today are still based in this system developed for a different era, for a different generation. Now, I want you to try and fathom this. Today's students in their lifetimes will experience the same rate of technological evolution that we've experienced in the past tens of thousands of years. MIT reports that 60% of the jobs available today did not exist in 1940, and an even larger percentage of the jobs of tomorrow don't exist today. And yet, we cling to an education system that rewards memorization instead of teaching how to find the answer. For decades, like many of you, I pushed for incremental change, trying to put a dent in a system that was never built to develop true learning. And then one day, in a moment, my perspective on everything changed. On February 2nd, 2018, I went from feeling completely healthy to being diagnosed with brain cancer. Two brain surgeries later, I was given a prognosis of five years to live. As you're probably imagining right now, everything about my world was flipped completely upside down. What I thought I knew about purpose, about success, about what matters in this world. People around me tried to comfort me, tried to help me find a silver lining. They said, Andy, Maybe you can make lemonade out of these lemons. Well, let me tell you, if I had had those lemons and probably a little better aim, they would have had to have ducked. <laughs> but here I am, seven years later, thanks to a breakthrough clinical trial drug in incredible health with a perspective on life that I'd never had before. My diagnosis was not an ending. It was the opportunity of a lifetime. Because when you are forced to look at the world differently, sometimes you realize it's not 
just that you were playing the game wrong. It's that you were playing the wrong game the entire time. My purpose was no longer collecting gold stars, which is too bad because I was really good at that. It was finding and realizing and relentlessly pursuing the opportunity in everything. And nowhere is there more opportunity, more need for urgent reinvention than our outdated education system. Now, I'm not exactly saying that I wanna give our education system brain cancer. <laughs> but I am saying that we need to flip it completely upside down and think dramatically differently when we rebuild the pieces. No more pushing for evolution against an education system that was never developed for true learning. It's time for an education revolution. And spoiler alert, money alone is not gonna solve this problem. The good news is that we have the fundamental elements already existing today to put together the pieces for this education evolution. As William Gibson said, the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. So today, I'm gonna to share with you those fundamental elements that we need for our education revolution. True student engagement, embracing AI instead of fearing it, and bringing joy to learning, not just some of the time, but all of the time. So let's get started. We have been ensuring that students have access to education for a very long time without the results and impact and preparation that we need. It's time for us to ensure that education is approachable, that we have true engagement in our learning. Research shows that one of the most important factors towards positive student outcomes is not the myth of natural born intelligence. It's a student's confidence in learning which is directly impacted by their learning environment and by their sense of belonging. So what if we adopted a community-centric model for education? What if we prioritize learning in community spaces, in libraries, in museums, in homes, as much as we did in the school building? This is our opportunity to unshackle ourselves from the notion that learning can only happen through a repetitive process through the same four walls from eight to four each day. Now, the Science Center and Children's Museum field have known this opportunity for a really long time, creating magical spaces where learning is student-centered where learners of all ages get a chance to tinker and explore and problem solve and learn with wonder. William Keat had it right when he said that education is not the filling of a pail, it's the lighting of a fire. Well, unfortunately, these magical spaces that spark that love for learning are often a minor supplement in the larger educational experience and sometimes in some communities not available at all. So what if we flipped that upside down? What if we made the incredible hands-on learning experiences available in these community spaces central to our learning environment and our learning experience? Well, at Thinkery, we did just that. We developed the first of its kind neighborhood museum embedded in a Title I school, a shared space. This revolutionary concept not only transforms learning during the school day by reinforcing concepts with experiential learning and discovery, it inspires and prepares educators to take these same practices into classrooms all across the district. And most exciting, 
is that outside of the school day, this exact same space, this integrated space of magic and discovery and our traditional school environment becomes a vibrant community hub where families meet, where educators gather and collaborate, and where students can pursue their passions in an environment that is comfortable and familiar and has a sense of belonging. And so is our, our first element in this education revolution. When student learning is engaging, when students believe that they can learn, then they will. Our second element is truly embracing AI and not fearing it. I know it's scary. It's gonna be okay, I promise. We have to accept the opportunity that AI brings to lift up all students. Now, I was a little nervous talking about AI today because any specific references that I made by the time this talk goes online would already be outdated. But what won't change is the opportunity we have from the incredible advancements happening in technology and AI and the role that that can play in learning. We have long known the potential to personalize and individualize experiences for every individual learner's needs. And AI can allow us to do that, providing learning at the exact right time, at the exact right level, at the exact right speed in the exact right environment. It can allow our educators to not have to be rote content delivering machines and instead tap in to their genius as guides and facilitators cultivating deep human connections with students and creating spaces of belonging where we can foster critical thinking and nurture creativity. It can open up new learning opportunities that we haven't even imagined yet. And most importantly, it can open up our opportunity for this community-based learning model because all of us now can play a stronger role as an educator because we can partner with a content expert and we can also make these environments for learning and exploration, no matter where we are, at our home, at our libraries, at our community centers. So we have a choice. We can run away from this opportunity, one of the most transformational moments in human history, and cling on to an outdated system, or we can embrace the opportunity for AI to serve, not as a replacement, but as a partner, as an assistant, as a true learning tool. Our third and final and most important element is bringing joy to learning because joyful learners become lifelong learners and lifelong learners will thrive in this dynamically changing world that we live in. Imagine a learning environment where joy is an essential component, not just some of the time, but all of the time. Not only is that transformational for students, that is gonna energize and empower and invigorate teachers and parents and community leaders. Never have we needed joy more. And this is our moment to integrate that into every learning experience. And the good news is we don't have to imagine it. It is happening in so many places today. At the Ron Clark Academy in urban Atlanta, where this joyful and playful and innovative learning environment was modeled after the houses in Harry Potter, a modern day Hogwarts. 100% of their students graduate and they are outperforming all of their peers across the country in every metric imaginable. In FIRST Robotics, where millions of students have been touched by the joy and the power of sport, but this is a sport of the mind. This is the most engaging and impactful and fun sporting environment where every single competitor can go pro. 80% of the graduates of FIRST Robotics have majored in STEM degrees in college. And there are so many other examples of these joyful learning environments. So if there's one thing for you to take away from this talk today, it's that we have to abandon our uphill push 
trying to make incremental change in our existing education system and that we have the elements, they exist today. The future is here for us to have an education revolution. We just have to be bold enough to embrace this opportunity and be comfortable letting go of the, the familiarity of an education system from a different era. Because at the end of the day, this isn't just about education. This is about shaping the world that we want to live in. A world where every child doesn't just learn to memorize things, but they become critical thinkers and problem solvers. And they're able to dream ambitiously. A world where our next generation doesn't just inherit the challenges that we face like climate change and growing rates of disease, they will be the ones to solve them. They will find a cure for cancer. And I, for one, am counting on them. Thank you.